Greetings everyone and welcome back to TNO. I'm your host, Hal Mokolova, in which now we are looking at what Heinrich Müller is doing with a Hauptverwaltung Aufklärung. But let's talk about Old Blood first. Antonin Grevich, Grevach was not fit for this kind of work, forced to stay on his feet for hours on end. Constantly on the move and even sometimes hearing the crack of a whip followed by a pain yell that always accompanied it. Life was not easy in Lutz. At least that's what it used to be called. Now it was called Litzmannstadt, which the 47 year old man found to be a horrific butchering of one of Poland's cities. <clears throat> Yet he could do nothing about it, only toil and toil until his body gave out. He had worked in a car plant before for some company he never got the name of, but apparently the higher ups decided that he was worthy. Worthy of what? Dying before 50 from overworking himself to death? The other men around him were much younger than he was, and the slightest suspicion came to him that he was merely an administrative error. No matter. He had railroad tracks to lay, work to do, a life to keep, even if it was a hollow and meaningless one. One day, Antonin came to work and saw that a young man had come up to him. Alexei, he was called. A bright man he was. A shame the Germans didn't look at him that way. Mr. Antonin, he shouted, calling the man to attention. Mr. Antonin, have you heard the news? He sighed, tempted to give Alexei a taste of black humor, but relented. He didn't have to be a depressive man to be around. <clears throat> what is it, Mr. Alexei? He asked, half curious and half not, but the younger man seemed excited. They're telling us... He rubbed the back of his head. Well, I've heard, I guess, that some of us might go back to Poland, live with our own. The heavy steel that creaked... Antonin's back was set down on the floor as Antonin gave him a glare shot with concern and copious amounts of distrust. Alexei could immediately feel some of his happiness be begin dispersing. Boy, you think I'll, it'll be any better there? Nice. Ah, I love it. Alright, so, we've got a couple comments to go through. We did all the hard left sides far. We did the other part of the left side. And now, we can keep going down this way. If there's one comment saying that we should get to the German Golden Age as fast as possible. Well, we'll get there by the end of this episode, hopefully. I would like to finish this side up first, just because we're almost done with it anyways. And we do, do get some more political power, so. As long as they're useful, yep. Although the Unity Pact's slavery-based economic system has been an objective detriment to the gross Germanic Reich's capacity for growth, the influence held by our government over Europe is astonishing. Thus, the Bowman's government shall pursue closer cooperation with the Pact's member states, allowing for the Reich to slowly chip away at their autonomy and or sovereignty. Failures shall be replaced with loyalists, ensuring that the Pact never slips from Germania's grip. Uh, another comment said, to actually use this, you have to click on different areas of the world. I forgot about that, but yes. Yes, we do. That's actually kind of cool. Let's do our world. Unternehmen Kondor. So, it would truly be a shame if Iberia were to fall to separatists. To prevent the specter of Bolshevism from returning to Europe, it's an operative to establish these separatists and their devious plots. Well, I guess it's, it might be a little bit too late now since Iberia already split up and Unternehmen Gehelfa. While it is in their best interest to protect counsel from the monopoly of Caldillos, our leadership is concerned about the possibility of liberal dominance in the Iberian politics. Using your assets in Iberia, we can influence various factions within the council towards our favor. Hmm. Alright, cool. But let's go and read the leeches slowly purged. Thankfully, as uh, Fiora Borman predicted, the GGR's economies began to improve the commencement of slave removal operations from the workforce. Although this has proven to be a slow process and surely shall continue to be, we mustn't cease, for the consequences will be disastrous and impair our chances at future development. Yet already unemployed figures have begun to fall as German citizens take up the jobs once held by slaves. Thus, we shall step up our efforts. Sehr good. All right, well, might as well choose that one anyways. There you go. All right, so let's go back over here. So we could use this stuff. That seems like it's kind of a waste at this point. Africa? Is there anything we can do about Africa? How about Russia? Unternehmen Schwert. Infiltrate West Russia, getting into on the ruler of the region. Ooh. We need to do some actual research stuff to do that stuff. Technology bugs. Asia? Or the Middle East, I guess. No? Asia, no. Down here in Oceania. Southeast Asia, no. Africa, we saw. South America, Mexico, or Central America. Unternehmen Architect. Three words that most succinctly define Speer. Liar, coward, traitor. Alright, so we might be able to get to him. We can remove him from being a national embarrassment from the spotlight. It might be hard to get access to him. So he seems to let every half-rate American talk show host do the same. Alright, maybe we'll try that. 62% chance of the mission succeeding. Get Randing us insight into the country. Well, can we only try this once? Ooh. I suppose we could try it. We'll see what happens. And recruit another. Cool. So we're doing all this stuff for our economy, and there were some people did say it was disappointing that we could not get France on our side. Yes, I agree. It was disappointing that we could not. But now we're at nine. We were at six earlier, but we got three. 
<sighs> you know what? I I'm going to wait. we got to wait because we can do this one. A 33% chance to get exactly what we needed or 66% chance to completely fail. And there's another 33% chance down there. So that's really, really, really sucks. So they get up to 9 or 10. Well, we're going to have to risk it. They've already won twice, so... God, I hope we can get Serbia with us. Alright. Keep an eye on that stuff. We're pretty much all done with this. We can invest more, but our, our current economy could use a little bit more work, I would say. I'm done, done researching stuff. Cover up Cabal efforts. Well, if I did that, like, it's still 0%, which really sucks. It's good. I'm surprised it hasn't fallen. Oh, Cameroon, African State. Well, I guess it hasn't fallen apart yet. So we'll see what happens. Don't need that. Oh, don't need that, since we can't do that. Uh, they're still doing that stuff. Naval Helicopter Aviation. Don't mind if we do. I'm going to close this for now, since we don't really need that. And they're still at 6. Good. Alright. And... Good. Pop-up attacks? Yes, please. Is there a way for Germany to go to war with Italy? It would be kind of cool if there was. Alright, after this one, maybe we'll do... Reaping the reward, but we... Well, actually... To get down there, you have to do both. The Lich is slowly purged. And und das Werk der Intelligence. So we have to be laying the ground next. But it's nice getting some research done, finally. It is 67. It's almost 68. So let's grab some more APC armor. That'd be kind of nice. Let time go on and do laying the ground. The issue of slavery permeates throughout the gross dramatic of the Reich society. Whilst many, including former Bormann, criticize the system enacted by contemporaries and predecessors alike, few have actually theorized the aftermath of its abolishment. Of course, given the government's pragmatic ethos, it will do no good to remove slavery and tie the unity packs economies to the fatherland if there are no workers to fill the gaps. Let's hire some Germans. Decisions relating to building domestic infrastructure. Good, I love infrastructure. Oh, and Deca Recon Satellites. So good. So, so good. Uh, so they're at 8. So that's good so far. And next up, we should want to do... Ooh, we did these two already. Which one? I'll do the bugs. Do bugs. And... Well, we're already doing one mission already, so there's not really much we can do about that. Yeah, we gotta wait probably for this one to get done. Yeah, so... This will be done in about less than a week. Pretty good. Aren't friendly rebels. Ooh, we, need, we don't have enough support equipment, do we? I almost never look at this page anymore. It's Germany. It's very so narrative-driven that we don't ever really look at it. That should be good enough. That should be good enough to help do that, maybe. And eh, do that too, why not? So they just slowly purged. Very good. Ser good. Ser, ser, ser good. And four days left for that, so that's not too bad. Laying the groundwork. Anything else? Reclaiming the pact. Yeah. Death comes silently. Darkness. Albert Speer inhaled. Fabric penetrated his mouth. The tires screeched. His heart thumped. Speer's exhaled. The bag over his head captured the warm breath. The core, the car jolted to a sudden stop. He heard something wrench open. Crushing cold air swept inside, devouring his body to the bone. He raised two trembling hands in the weak surrender. Something grabbed him roughly and pulled him from the car. He staggered to his feet, hands above his head, his breathing quickening. Something hard pressed into his back. Click. He started walking. Speer yachts. A voice behind him whispered mockingly. It was German. It was, he had not heard a German voice in so long. He heard laughter less with malice from elsewhere. How long was he forced to walk? An hour? Five hours? Or was it just five minutes? His whole body was numb from the cold. The leaves crunched beneath his feet. Finally, they ordered him to stop and kneel. Who were these Nazi hunters? Were they Nazi hunters? Fellow German exiles, Bolsheviks, or Democrats? Were they Bormann secret agents, or the presidents, or ARPA, or CIA? His mind was racing and starting like an overheated car engine. He thought of his wife and children. He thought of the German race doomed to collapse. He thought of Germania all in its glory. He thought of Adolf Hitler and his bold vision for the future. He thought of his father, the distant man with cold eyes. His gunshot rang out. His body slumped into the ditch. And silent and still. From whence he came. Wow. We were actually successful. Awesome. Deploy Ant Decker Satellites. An advanced technology that the HVA has invented. With significant investment into these satellites, the hope is to deploy them across the states that we have an interest in our own neutral countries or unfriendly countries if it matters not. It's promised that they will be extremely useful in gathering intel in the form of mass photographs, so long as they remain uncaught. Temporarily increase mission success by 5%. We can more research? Yeah, should have thrown them up there. That's actually really cool. Nie mehr Speer. Speer Jatz, Hebel cried mockingly, busting into laughter. He took another swig of his glass. Quiet down, you off bomb, and shook his head, but it kept his gaze down, a vicious grin sprang across his face. Have a glass, Heinrich, we're celebrating. No, thank you, mein Fehr. Heinrich Müller replied coldly, some of my subordinates consider this photograph to have been unnecessary risk. 
Is that so? Bowman replied uninterestedly, eyes still fixed on the black and white photo laid out before him. They showed a body curled up inside a muddy ditch like an abandoned fetus. Are the Americans blaming us? They've raised their suspicions, naturally, Havel replied. My public statement today will be my only statement on the matter soon. The traitor will fade from memory. Not German memory, Bowman corrected, finally looking up. Children throughout the Reich will learn of Speer, the Jewish puppet who betrayed the Aryan race. He lies in a grave of his own making. Yes, yeah, so we're not doing anything there. We actually have 73 million. Oh, yeah, well, let's start cutting stuff down, right? Nice. Thank you very much, my friends. Thank you very much. Time for some more coffee that we have here. It's Swiss chocolate almond flavored coffee. Oh, fancy. Now, I'm a little worried about this. Just because we're 9 and 8. They have 15 days left. If they do another one, there's a chance that they could still win. The mysterious disappearance of Speer. What is Speer? Well, he's in a ditch. Well, he should be. From the Cabal? Oh, absolutely. 9.3%. Staff and funds? Nope. Uh, nope. Special missions here? Anything at home? No, nah, there's not really much we can do there right now, which is totally fine. <sighs> okay, so it looks like if we get to day 9, and they don't raise do anything, then that means that we'll probably win since they won't have time to complete another objective here. So we should be able to win that one. Let's hope we win that one. <laughs> By carrot. Hmm, the time has come for the government to commence with a sl undertaking of the Reich's grandest of infrastructure projects. Unfortunately, for too long, the rails and roads of the GGR have been subject to neglect from the government. Shall we rectify this? Indeed. Upgrading our vital links will provide an easy way to employ large swaths of workers who will kickstart the economy by spending their hard-earned money on goods and services offered by firms, who, in turn, will hire a greater quantity of workers, of course, so this will prove to be a costly endeavor, but it shall grant the Reich an exponential return. The Twilight, the Red Twilight, since the fall of London, novelist Eric Blair, better known by his pen name George Orwell, has gained prominence from his political writings down down in exile in Canada today. He has released his most lengthy opus, the last chapter in his legacy of the Vell Creek alternate history series of Red Twilight. The series takes place in a timeline that diverges from our own with the central powers victory in the First World War, and received critical attention for its allegorical deconstruction of our world. After the defeat of the Entente, the governments of the British Empire and France quickly collapse and are replaced by socialist republics, while Russia eventually becomes a fa fascistic dictatorship led by white revolutionary Boris Savinkov. After unifying to destroy the German Empire, her allies and the remnants of the Entente, the alliance quickly shatters with the liberation or the libertarian syndicalist commune of France and Oswald Mosley's Union of Britain forging their own internationals and engaging in an apocalyptic nuclear war that leaves Europe and North America in ruins, while Russia and Japan engage in a similarly destructive schism. The rule by 1962 is devastated by nuclear fallout and divided by a four-sided armistice threatening to either, to either end civilization or enslave it under various flavors of totalitarianism. Ending with the English Socialist American Commonwealth tearing itself apart for, into the Third American Civil War as white supremacists revolt in the South, the novel has received further analysis for its complex parallels with the violent conflicts occurring all around the world, though some dismiss it as no different than the rest of the glut of alt history novels that has been filling bookshelves in recent years. Responding to critics, Orwell's address the plausibility of this universe by writing, This universe is no less stranger than anything else has happened in ours for the last half century. We live in a childish, childish fantasy, do we not? Hmm. So we get some more civilian factories, we get a little bit more infrastructure, and it costs us $250 million, and by stick, and she, and Scheidungsnetzwerk. Sehr good, my friend, sehr good. Alright, so turn 5, we did win! I knew it, we did win, uh, look at that a little bit. We have a few more days, or actually, wow, actually that's 121 days. <clears throat> oh, we have not already launched a special mission. Oh, okay, so that's temp, uh, that was temporary, and that we could do other stuff as well at the same time. You know, there's really not much we can do around here anyways, so... See what happens. Nothing down there. Reclaiming the pact. No. Big sadness. And gross around continental Europa. Yes. Invest in domestic infrastructure. Oh, we get a free civilian fact. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do that one. There you go. Here. Do that. Why not? I don't care. All right. So we're two. We must be careful. T two to four. Three to four. One to three. Zero to one. I kind of like that. We're going to race in Albania. Expose the race war in Albania. There's a race war going on in Albania. Huh. Okay, that's... Nice. Oh my goodness, we have a positive amount of GDP. Look at that, 2.2%. Oh, happy 1968. This is the greatest gift that we could ever have for New Year's. Oh, better GDP. We got up by point or 2.6. Oh, warms my heart. Speer, Speer's dead. And Bowman knows what he's doing. Somewhat. Oh, I love it. My carrot. Das Werke des Volkes. Uh, 
Oh, yeah, let's do that one. Uh, better poverty rate? Yes, please. The German work of the historical backbone of the National Socialist regime has been given the GGR their all, thanks in part to the everlasting devotion of the workers to the government. The Reich has already seen a significant decrease in poverty due to their efforts. Furthermore, the loyalty of the population to Fiat Bormann's regime is strengthened thanks to our gracious provision of work. Hmm. I love it. Sehr, sehr gut, my friend. Uh, all right. Next one will be done in quite a while. Two, 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 six, six. Oh, boy. If we get to four, that would be just spectacular. Two to four, two to four, one to three. Anti Italian propaganda. Or lose 400,000 from liquid reserves. Well, I'm going to risk it to go all the way up to this high. Anything here? Uh, yes, infrastructure modernization. Well, allow the selection of a Reich's Commissariat in the map above where the construction will take place. If a Reich's Commissariat has not been selected in three days, it'll be randomly selected. Well, slave population is almost 20 million. Jesus, we got a lot of slaves. Muscovy does not have that many slaves. Six million. Netherlands doesn't have that many. Norway has none, so that's fine. Whatever. Um. Of our ex and where the. Uh, that's not, well, we're removed on the chosen ex commissariat. Modify gross around continental effects. More research. Alright, so where do we want to do it? Hmm. It's already been completed in the region. Um. Let's do it in. Hmm. Calcasin? Maybe they could extract more resources? That sounds like a good idea. Navy industrial equipment. <clears throat> Western slave repatriation. Let's see. Unavailable, unavailable. There you go, you can have some slaves. <laughs> there we go. Nice. It's unavailable, unavailable. It's already done it. There you go. Oh, I love it. I love the whole economic side of uh, TNL. Even though it's not very much, obviously, but, you know, whatever. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Das Vaca das Volks. And Stick. Before too long, the medical corporations have acted autonomously of the government, choosing to ignore their rightful will over the gross Germanisches Reich's economic direction and pursuit of their own loathsome, profit driven agenda. Most notably, the continued adherence to the philosophies of of the slave economy, acting in annoying opposition to our attempts to destroy the flawed system, thus, which will bring in systems that will cause these entities to become dependent on the government for attaining the, of profit, for the attainment of profit. Undoubtedly, these new measures will prove deeply unpopular amongst the mega corporations, but the Fuhrer and their leaders know it could be far worse for them. Matai overthrown by every administrators? Ironic, he could not save the nation from death, but he not his administration. Ah, oh, big sadness for that guy. Oh well, we're not him. Not yet. Alright, so what's going on here? Help ex extraction operations? Why not? It's only money. There you go, Ukraine. We'll help you out, buddy. Hey, there we did it! We got 10! We might actually win! We might actually get Serbia! Oh, that'd be so nice. Oh, man, if you want... If anything, always get the Serbs on your side. They are... Crazy. And we like them that way. Zero percent. Yeah, it's going down by so 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 much. There's nothing we can really do. The Nordlager der Wende. Honest <clears throat> sat in the basement of his local church, watching as the projector flickered to life. As he was aware, there was no one around but the chapel's priest. And Honest figured that if the man was going to give up, he had already done so. It was worth the risk. Honest thought to be certain that the film was perfect before it sent off. Before it sent. Sent it off the next day. He'd watched the three things already, three times already, actually, but knew that even if one mistake had slipped through, he would have failed in his duty at the time. Or oh, the film began with the video that Anos family had taken at Zapus, when Anos had only been a child. Finding this video in his attic had been the motivation for the entire project, intently watching the screen. Arnos heard himself describe the tradition in German, as voices chattered beneath him in the Swabian language. Next, Arnos listened as his father, historian, discussed the history of the Swabs and watched his local community celebrate the mosque. <clears throat> He had been forced to use many other videos, as he did not wish to draw the ire of suspicion of the, the Venden Abteilung. If this passion project of Arnos got out, there would be little telling what would happen to those who had agreed to participate in it. Suddenly, Arnos froze. There was something coming down the chapel steps. The air in the room disappeared for a moment, and the young filmmaker sat perfectly still. The only sound remaining was a projector humming gently, displaying a video of Arnos' mother decorating eggs for Easter, and then, whoever had ventured down to the basement began to recede upwards. Arnos let his breath free as beautiful Lusatia, Lusatia began to softly play. Tomorrow, the film will be on its way to Switzerland. Will they be of internal memory? Eternal memory, my friend. Good.
Ah, oh, that is so good that we got it. Uh, that's what I was waiting for. Skirts, 1968. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Totally March, though. Advanced infantry rifles? Yes, please. HK, HK, very good. And stick on das Werke des Konzerns. The efforts of our government have proven to be successful. The power of the mega corporations has successfully cur been curbed. Under the skillful leadership of the Fuhrer Bormann, and who has worked tirelessly for the German people, we have accomplished the impossible and have therefore secured the right of future. For the first time in decades, the government can now more reliably improve the economy, whilst having to worry less about the influence of mega corporations over our affairs. Mega corps? Every time I see a mega corp, I always think of the. Oh, there we go. Should we set to this? I always think of in Ratchet and Clank. Mega Corp. Ratchet and Clank going commando. I love that game so much. That was my first game on PS2. Anyways, interest rates will slightly increase. C'est la vie. It is what it is. And Scheidungsnetzwerk. In 10 years' time, every con economy in the world will be run by computers with cyber system. Uh, Germany will not be ahead of the curve. They will create a new curve. Bormann examined the room he was sitting in. Though ring of swiveling chairs face one another in the center. Upholstered in garnish orange, while the wood-paneled walls, walls were festooned with screens and blinking lights. While it was only a mock-up, he could see the intention. Surrounded by all the information of the Reich, he could pick up a figure with a swing of his legs and spin. And for it was a far more organized system than the mountains of paperwork that was usually inundated in. He would have been like he was a captain of a spaceship. And what exactly do these companies do that a, got, that a person cannot? I have hundreds of economic planners working tirelessly towards the same goal. A glint appeared in the scientist's eyes, one that Borman recognized as that of a salesman who has been just asked the right question. He leaned forward in an uncomfortable chair. That might, that may be what they tell you, but no man can work without rest. If they give you their all, you can get almost 12 hours a day at peak efficiency, and that's with toilet breaks, smoking breaks, lunch breaks, cy cybersim. Does not rest, does not eat, has no opinion, it cannot deceive or complain or strike, it simply sees the figures and finds the patterns. A shortage of coal in the Rhineland will alert the mines in the Ruhr. Overproduction of ammunition in Prussia will be sent to Ukraine without even a phone call, and strikes in Silesia will be detected automatically and the central government informed. Berman leaned back for a scientist, the manager knew how to sell. If one could entrust a machine, what could one trust? You have your funding, my friend. Get it done. Oh boy, who's next? Who is next? So how much longer must we wait? Because this gives them more research speed, better counterintelligence, intelligence, network intel strength gain factor, which is okay if we really cared about that stuff. Or maybe you guys do. I don't really care about the all this stuff too much. I like the research speed, though. And actually, are we getting spied on? We actually might be. Um, wow, he looks really good. Tobias Maya. Tobias. Alright, so that's good. That's a little bit ahead of time. 1960 stuff is, well, pretty much all done. Which is so good. Artillery? Yes, please. 1960s, basically. Don't mind if we do. Next up, anything? No, not really too much. And, und das Werk der Intelligence. The power of an intelligent mind can alter the fabric of reality. Thankfully, the Obermensch have bred some of humanity's greatest minds, at least in contemporary te terminology. Therefore, the government has a duty to investigate scientific and technological alternatives to the status quo that may help propel economic growth. Moreover, through the encouragement of an innovative ethos. The GGR shall cut above the rest, perhaps even allowing us to once more firmly re-establish our economic or supremacy over the Americans and Japanese in due time. A gang's remnant. A repulsive liberal toad was paperclipped to the top left corner of the report, his bulging eyes staring back at Heinrich Müller mockingly. The chief of the all new Polk side flicked through the documents with growing satisfaction. The photographs of the fat man waddling, waddling through the snow and shuffling into cabins was proof enough Ludwig Erhard was in Switzerland. Müller allowed himself a celebratory cigarette. Two weeks earlier, Opel agents had located an excellent community in the south of Switzerland. They had uncovered rumors that two members of Abelschberg's gang of four had taken refuge with these degenerates, although the only cut Georg Kiesinger, Kiesinger had been located until now. Miller strung the phone with his slender fingers. He had meticulously drafted three potential operations depending on the Führer's orders. An act of clemency towards the charismatic Kiesinger, Speer's accomplice, but a talented NSDAP official, would certainly prove popular among the party conservatives. Perhaps Bowman was in a merciful mood and would extend this office of rehabilitation to Erhard, Schabowski, economic advisor. He rang the direct line to Fiore's office and waited. The Fiore decided to send bullets instead of forgiveness was, of course, the final eventuality Müller had prepared for. The phone clicked. Hey Müller, we shall rehabilitate Kiesinger. Lend the hand of forgiveness to both men. Hmm. Well, because you guys really wanted me to go, most of you guys wanted me to go reformist, what if we had uh, lend the hand of forgiveness to both men? What if we did that? Because Speer's dead. Oh, he's not dead. He just disappeared, according to official reports. So, exterminate them. A new mission. As much as I want to do that, I want to see. We're, we wanted to go a little more reformist. Let's let's try it out. You know, ex 
Extend forgiveness. Find the Cabal, yes. It's very... not good, but whatever. Hmm. This one's almost done, which is awesome. Anything for North America? No. Hmm. Well, actually... Bi bug political enemies, that'd be kind of nice. Oh, we actually get more weekly stability. Yeah, let's try that one. Again, rehabilitation. Kissing a stat out of the train window in numb bewilderment. Oh, how the insanity of life had taken him in, in its grip without a chance for a purpose or repose. He still remembered the days of the Burger Creek. Speer would look over the maps of Germany with folded arms and an inscrutable expression. Schmidt would pace from corner to corner, not to forget Erhard puffing away on his... Cigar? Eha was sitting slumped in the corner. Kisinga couldn't begin to imagine what his friend was going through. Stop offering me cigars, was big. Why? Eha chortled. It may be our last. What's to stop the mighty Bowman from changing his mind and having both of our heads on spikes? The party admires our skills, Ludwig. I'd rather go along with this little rehabilitation scheme than be assassinated in some tiny Swiss village with a bunch of dissidents. Kisinga had expected to feel fear, perhaps even a twisted sense of relief. Yet, as he stared at the cameras that waited the slowing train, he felt nothing. He saw the familiar face of the effeminate Baal de Van Chirac, who was preparing to drastically greet them, and even a greater scheme of numbness would wash over him. Well home, Ludwig. Well home. A hit on Schmidt? Heinrich Müller drifted into the office silently. As always, he gently placed himself onto the chair opposite Bowman and massaged his aching fingers. The fear had all but disappeared in a whirlwind of smoke and paperwork. Müller disturbed, was disturbed by how lined and solid the man's face had become over the last few years he felt his lip curling. Go on, Bowman said finally, eyes fixed firmly on his documents. My men have tracked Helmut Schmidt to the United States. Bowman slowly looked up. He opened his simple wooden box of cigars and fished around his desk for a lighter. I assume from your tone that there's more to the story, Bowman twiddled his cigar with his stubby little fingers. I'm in a rather good mood today, Herr Müller, so please inform me as to why I can't ask for this extradition or have him shot like a rabid dog. Schmidt is under heavy protection from the FBI. Uh, Mueller explained, for what reason, I do not know, but the U.S. government clearly has plans for him. This is not the, some mere dissident skulking around in South America. Perhaps Schmidt was an American spy all along, Bowman muttered, clutching his cigar holder. All this talk of reform was a backdoor for the mongrel Americans and the Jewish puppet masters that enter German society. He did not say this years ago. He finally brought the letter to the cigar. You're right here, Mueller. We can't get to Schmidt without coming into conflict with the FBI on American soil, which would mean certain war, and I won't risk war over Schmidt's puppet. We can only act when the time is right. I couldn't agree more, mein Führer. An Eastern industrial buildup? Hmm. So we can do this for our Eastern Reich's Commissariats. We use a lot of civilian factories. We get more loyalty. Ah, uh, sure, why not? It's only costing money. I really want to build up the Ukraine. Ukraine seems like a nice place to be. And I guess we're done siding up with other people. Let's take a look at the factions. So unfortunately, we did not get French State. That's really sad. Uh, Brittany actually joined the OFN, which is kind of strange. I guess I usually don't see that. But, hey, research is done. Look at that. That's beautiful. We have Serbia. You know what? People say they couldn't cooperate. But we got all the Balkans to cooperate. Romania, Hungary, which I don't think is technically part of the Balkans. Uh, Slovakia, which isn't part of the Balkans. Bulgaria, Serbia. They all listen to us. Uh, so we will do that stuff very soon. Next up, let's go ahead and do... Oh, can we do this one? Yes. Bug political enemies? Yes, please. Somebody, recruit, recruit, recruit. I don't care about the cost. I, as you can tell, I really don't care about the cost. Research speed, missing chances, expertise, growth. Ah, truth serum. Hmm, inject me with that good stuff. All right. Invest in domestic infrastructure. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. All right. So, what's the budget like right now? M minus seven. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, look at that. Oh, the debt went up by point. Went by 0.5, I believe, which is not good. But the growth went up by 0.1, which is, you know, it is what it is. And right now, we're actually just building up a lot of civilian factories and actually building up a lot of civilian factories in our puppet states. So, who says that Bowman does not care about his people? And by his people, all of the Unity Pact. Beautiful, my friends. So, that's Shasvunda. Once more, Bowman sat in that garnish orange revolving chair, though this time the other chairs were occupied, he had instructed the men to ignore him, and they were doing their best aside from one whose chair Bowman cu coupled. He was doing his best not to glower or glower at his furor when he thought he wasn't looking. The chairs revolved back and forth like repelling magnets as they called out percentages and figures. They seemed to not to use the words like the and and. 
or indeed any other words that were required to form a sentence, but nonetheless they seemed to understand one another implicitly. The room was almost identical to the mock-up, with the exception of a number of ashtrays that contained the oppressive amounts of cigarettes and the seven planners were going through. The barman kicked against the floor, setting his chair into a spin. He could indeed see practically anything he desired. Production figures in Hamburg, unemployment in Munich, administrative expenses in Germania, Cybersyn had already performed an impressive call on use of civil servants and streamlined production pipelines to enough to pay for itself, and the engineers had been considering an expansion of its computing power to delegate yet more functions to the ever expanding network of translators, or transistors, I should say. A future where he didn't need economists, or economists. Borman sighed wishfully and kicked his chair into another spin. For a brief moment, science had gone up in his estimation, except the owner of his chair. He would have been, he would have to disappear. He would have to be disappeared. Or disappear. And they say a project never worked. 100 million to fund research focused on small medium enterprises? Ah, academic base begins to improve. Great, reaping the reward. The groundwork for the rejuvenation of the GGRs is complete indeed. Under the dutiful rule of the Fuhrer Bowman, our Reich's economy has once again risen from the flames, much in the same vein as the Phoenix. Moreover, at long last, our well-placed investments have begun to bear fruit as the economy continues to improve. Thankfully, for once, everything is going quite well for the Reich, and we've earned our reward. Sehr gut. Anything else down here yet? Uh, no, no, board. It looks like it's going quite well, actually, for us. Quite, quite well. 68. Hopefully, there will be no crisis regarding fuel in the Middle East. Lupin Aria. Doctor, it is late. Do you need anything else from me before I go home? Meekly asked Dr. Tobias Lonsberg's assistant, poking her head through the closed, sudden, closed sturdy door. No, Anita, that'll be all. It's late. You better hurry home to your husband. Dr. Lonsberg replied somewhat hurriedly, dismissing his assistant. Have a good night now. Glancing at the clock upon his wall, he nervously realized that his patient would soon arrive. But foolish, he thought to himself. He should have made sure the assistant had left a half hour ago. He knew he was getting careless and that it could land him in serious trouble, but he scarcely knew a single doctor that hadn't been doing the same for him for extra income. If they were going to get in trouble, surely he wouldn't either. Dr. Landsberg's thoughts were interrupted by a distant knocking upon the front door of his practice. By God, he had really cut it close. He swiftly produced a key from his pocket, unlocking a drawer in his desk and opening it, revealing an official and stamped document labeled Aria, Aria Nachweise. Grabbing his document, he gr briskly made his way to the front door, unlocking it for his late-night patient. Stop, don't enter. I have your papers. Granted that you have the money, Dr. Landsberg coldly greeted the per patron, attempting to arouse as little suspicion as possible from his late-night visit to his office. Thank you, doctor. I couldn't get my aria nakvis visa normally. I thought me and my children were doomed to be outcasts. You are a savior, doctor, thanked the man, I'm handing over an envelope full of Reichsmarks, before quickly turning about and scurrying away down the evening tar street. Evening Street. Without returning any remarks, Dr. Landsberg shut his door and retreated back to his study. Letting out a sigh, he looked at his clock again. The patient was early, he truly was getting careless. Yet, in these days, would the authorities even notice? He let the thought settle for a moment, calling himself down before opening the envelope he received and counting its contents. Another couple thousand marks in my pocket. Autonal Gemini. Perfectly loyal to the will of Germania, for decades the Reichskommissars have served the administrative centers of the occupied regions of the GGR. Yet actions speak louder, louder than words. Too long have the Reichskommissars acted as sovereign nation states with independent economies rather than serve the women of the Reich's economic dictatorship. Thus, as agreed by the Fuhrer himself, the Reichskommissariats, economies, the railroads, and the potential, or the personnel, shall all be tied directly to Germania, no exceptions. Tie the economies of the Grossar members to our own and ensure that they never escape our grasp. Grasp or grip. I like it. I like that a lot. You cannot escape us. No, no, no. Can I do anything about these guys? Yeah, we have a lot of slaves. And oh, actually, now we've got about 300,000 left slaves here. That's a lot of slaves. I'll be saying, man, that's that's a lot of slaves. Sometimes having slaves might not be a good idea. But, want to name a Condor? Ah, screw it. We'll do it anyways because we can. There you go. I don't care about the cost. As you can tell, as I said before, very good. 0%. Not good. All right, so it seems like things are slowing down a little bit. We have a little bit less we can do, especially trying to align people. Um, we did get the French dip. We got pretty much everyone else, so it is what it is. Almost minus 8 billion, 2.4%. Ah, oh, so nice. Pop-up attacks. Ah, oh, I love it. Yes, please. Stealth integration. Yes. Variable attack patterns. Let's go ahead and grab some of uh, mission specialities, and we'll almost be done with the air doctrine, which is glorious. Absolutely glorious in our unrivaled future. The GGR is an economic powerhouse of unrivaled comparison. Indeed, the terrorist efforts of the Fuhrer have secured their Reich a glittering future, but what now? We mustn't get complacent as the situation may alter once more. Thus, it is for the best that the government begin to investigate alternatives to secure our efficiency. Luckily, a firm that we have previously invested in has come to the Fuhrer with quite an interesting pro proposition, to say the least. Conservative victory in Canada? Everyone against him but the people? Well, I'm not Canadian, so I'm not sure who that is, but good job, Mr. Canadian dude. Good job. 
So, so good. Uh, yes. Actually, oh, we can already go and do this. A smile for the camera, so. All right, yeah, we can do that one eventually. We will eventually do it, so. I, I love getting through all the economic stuff first so we can reap the benefits. Oh, my bad word. We just got like 2.4% more GDP growth. Oh, yes. Yes. I love the GGR. All right, the Bright Urban Project. Sure. Uh, hide, hide. Integrate the... Oh, yes. Yes. Naval Industry Investments. And can we choose some place here for this? Probably... Oh, there we go. Denmark. So good. The Germanic Copenhagen Connection. Yes. Look at that. Um, where can we put slaves? Ah, Denmark. Awesome. I love this. I love TNO too much. Fun the Cabal? Sure, why not? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Good. The economy is doing be much better. So much better now. Holy cow. Alright, we could do some naval stuff. We're already done with our land auction, of course. Engineering stuff. Um, it's 225 days. That's a little bit too much for me. We're already really good on a lot of stuff. Which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Light aircraft. We already got this stuff. Uh, I don't use interceptors. So, it is what it is. Uh, heavy planes, why not? Uh, Unrivaled future. The disconnected pipelines. Further integrate everyone. Ooh, oh, yes. Let's do this one. The disconnected pipelines. Oil is the lifeblood of the great GGR, the fluid that bounds the various appendages of national social rule together. Yet, despite this unquestionable fact, the veins by which blood is dispensed throughout the organism are disconnected and inefficient. Thus, there is little question with regard how do we must rectify this. It's quite simple, in fact. The government shall tighten its grip over our hegemony by linking all the PAX pipelines together. The vast resources of the Reich shall be directly directed by Germania. Announcement from the Reichsvakamsminz... Oh, Reichs... Reichsvakamsministerium. The Reich Ministry of Transport has, in bureaucratic triumph, announced the inauguration of the latest large-scale pro works projects. A concept has been bounced around since Hitler's incumbency. The Breitzurban's... Breitz... Urban plan has been retooled somewhat. Hitler's original plan called visionary and too bold in polite terms have been toned down somewhat. The original plan to more than double the ra railway gauges across the Reich has been toned down to a third increase. Although alongside the new railways will be strong a new s network of autobahns. Although Reich's ministers have rumored to be unhappy about the disproportion of funding this particular project is receiving. Fuhrer Bormann, however, has praised the construction of yet another of his predecessor's projects, saying, calling it another step towards Hitler's dream for Germany. Aren't they going to have to re redesign all the trains? Shh. That's okay, it's just a bunch of cost. And I can't cut down the, the our debt because I keep investing in other projects. Oh, it's got to stay down. Huh? Oh, goodbye, Dune Hammer Gaming. The Isle is bathed in blood once more. Ah, uh, unravel future gold for science, my friends. And a good national socialist economy. <clears throat> The role of the state is to provide the nation with incentives and funding for innovation and progress. More accurately, this, involve, this involves giving a lot of scientists a lot of money and hoping that they come up with something. The best thing is, this strategy usually worked. Bowman sometimes considered himself a man of science. He had massive respect for the discipline and the great area of minds who had originated its every moment of progress. It was these minds who had now bestowed a massive investment in research and development firms across the record now to receive government grants for every new project started. Germany was already indisputably the world center of science and thought, but the fear knew it could be so much more. Beyond realizing the German ideals of science and progress, Bormann understood that these investments would provide a massive boot to the German economy. As center of innovation, the Ruhr will now be able to compete with the best of California or Tokyo. This was just securing his reputation, however. There's never meant there was never a doubt of German supremacy, of course. Of course, of course, of course. Uh, that being said, there should be, you know, periodic feedback periods that uh detail what is being worked on at a given time, just to make sure that people are, are using the money wisely. Renewed communist hostility. The Reich's Minister for Foreign Affairs has received notice that a Russian warlord state referring to itself as a West Siberian People's Republic has issued a diplomatic condemnation of Greater German Reich. The Republic, reportedly steered by Chairman Lazar Kaganovich, a Jew who is headquartered in Tumen, and reportedly pushes a more aggressive economic policy than its Soviet predecessors. The message, a caustic screed, expectantly filled with Bolshevik cliches, reads as follows. The Greater German Reich is among the greatest imperialist powers in human history, and perhaps the bloodiest. It's fascistic, hyper-reactionary, ideologies led it to commit the greatest genocide in human history, the extermination of people known as 
Jews, Poles, Russians, Balts, and other peoples of Eastern Europe in the name of colonialism and imperial expansion. Through the widespread use of slavery, predicated on racial lines, it has overseen the hideous exploitation of its labor and over 40 million people in Europe alone, with its conquest of old colonial territories in Africa, expanding by the number of by millions more. The Soviet Union, a worldwide beacon of worker struggle, also fell prey to Germany's depredations, with incalculable costs to its people and the continued occupation of its core territories. The poisonous ideology of racism, which divides the working class only to... In, to immiserate them all, has seen a greater success in the world than here, and it's thought to be the goal of the international workers' movement to tear down this fascist monstrosity and free the peoples of Germany and Eastern Europe alike. The WSPR may rise to be a threat in the future, but as of now, it is still weak and surrounded by enemies, its threats mere saber-rattling. Yet, yet, let it try to challenge Reich's hegemony. No matter how many times the Bolsheviks rise against us, they will always fail. Uh, Puerel ranting from a rump state. I mean, we don't care. Okay. Uh, Breitz Purban. Yes. Wow, Holland and a bunch of other places. Amsterdam, the right, uh, will get level 10 infrastructure. Wow. A large percent of Germany's exports and imports run through the Welsing port. Sweet. I love it. And for here, can we do anything else? Yes. No. Gehilfe. The formation of the Sock Intern, a return of the Reds. Well, I don't really care. Oh, wait, so that's two. Oh, so you guys already heard. Ah. Oh. Okay, there's so many communists. I mean, then again, it is the former Soviet Union. What do you expect? Anything else? No. Nothing we can really do for now. Big sadness. Big sadness. After this, actually, when's our next research done before I start reading stuff? Oh, Muldoon reelected and a great conspiracy. Oh. Oh, great, great conspiracy. Ooh, increasing sl rate of slave removal. How about Das Entscheidungsnetzwerk? Thankfully, the E word has prov proven to be a great success. Colloquially known as Cybersim, the system has proven itself to be effective with its calculations having helped to stabilize our finances and massively improve the GGR's economic growth. Moreover, its success has allowed for the Fuhrer to personally tighten his grip over economic matters through the issuing of redundancy upon several previously unsavory characteristics. Yet, this is only the beginning. The firm has promised the government updates to the software that will further increase its effectiveness. Awesome. Help from outside, the two men who entered the Commandant Marco's office were not the standard AAS agents that slipped through his door, and he knew it. They carried themselves with an air that was so often mis missing from the office that Marcos had nearly forgotten how it looked to be among real professionals, of course. Even if Marcos had been less observant, the German eagles that adorned their identification would have to be given away. He raised an eyebrow as it gestured to the two seats, which they took. Marcos began politely. My friends, welcome to Iberia. My name is Marcos Arroyo. You are agents Loa and Taiga, right? The two agents nodded, their eyes tracing the room, floating across the bookshelves filled with files and cluttered desks. Once again, I offer my deepest thanks to your government for sending such experienced aid. May we see some of your files, after action reports, surveillance, the like. One of the two chimed in. Marcos wasn't sure which was the tiger and which was Lova, but he handed the, some folders over to the men. They opened it up and chattering among themselves. Marcos strained to hear, but soon realized that they weren't speaking Spanish, and after a few minutes, they sat the files back down. Now, come on, Marcos. What you and the AAS have here is a start. There's certainly more room for improvement. We will help you get there now. Shall we begin? Of course. Uh, let's go and do Gehilfe. Why not? Because we can. Max that out. And just invest. 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 Oh, that's so good. Ah, truth serum. Good. My, the economy. I mean, I'll be honest. I've got a very warm feeling in my heart now for this. This would be a triumphant thing if we could integrate the Netherlands. Right? We have so much political power, too, so it doesn't even really matter too much. Anything here? No, nothing down there at the bottom. That's, so, that's just fine with us. Soon we should have more stuff to play with. And what are we building? We're trying to finish up Niederschleissen. Can we build up any more here? Oh, yes. No matter where they may be, we shall help build up the economies of what will be the GGR in the future, my friends. So, anything we build up is an investment for the future, my friends. That is how we do it. Ah, I knew this would happen eventually. I don't even look at what they're doing. Just click on stuff. Anything else? Infrastructure modernization? Yes, please. And we should choose this. So it be completed, completed. Oh, how about... No, that's actually... Oh, yeah, we own that. Well, extraction? Why not? Yes. 
Very, very good, my friends. All right, next up, the power of the machine. Let's do the winding roads. The pipelines aren't enough. Now we mustn't halt with them alone if we are to connect the vast territories of the GGR. The issue of the railways have long dogged Germania's government, with the Reichskommissars having unparalleled control over the vast majority of all rail lines due to their location within the Reichskommissariat itself. Thus, we shall set out to ensure that every new railroad is centered on the Reich's capital, giving the Fuhrer government unparalleled control over it. Ensure our slaves are put to work and deported more quickly, increasing the rate of slave removal by a whole 10%. Look at that. GDP. That's already 240. Now, if we get up to 340, that's not great, but we're doing quite well, I'd say. There we go. Minus 10 billion. Oh, my goodness. I love it. So good. So good. Ah, oh, man. I I remember reading that TNO was originally uh, Victoria 2 mod, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong about that, but... <sighs> I love Victoria too. Anyways, uh, everything's improving except for industrial expertise, which we can't do anything about. But everything else is going up. Poverty's getting better, much better actually. Agriculture, research facilities, academic base even. And you know we could have improved that earlier, but I wanted to improve our army professionalism anyways first. So it is what it is in the power of the machine. The efficiency of the GGR is unmatched by all other contemporary nation states. The Fuhrer's technocratic approach to economic matters will continue to positively impact the Reich's financial situation. The Entscheidungswerk, not back, combined with the reduced cost of monetary calculations made near instantaneously, has allowed for the government to provide the balance of our budget in an incredible manner. High of the machine. Price controls are the price of control. Huh. A reforward right. And I did say that we will get down to the German Golden Age, so it... As you can tell, this video is kind of long. So it is sort of long, but I think it's worth it. And as you can tell, I love TNO you know, too much. I love... Oh, look at that. Minus 11 billion. Oh, just warms my heart every time I see that. 5%. 5%. And of course, England defeats Scotland. Wow. Hope I can... Hmm. Well, hope I can still monetize this. <clears throat> no, don't get copyright struck. That's really the main deal. Bug political enemies? Sure, why not? Why not? Hmm, 68... Uh, yeah, why not? It's, it's not that ahead of time, so. Oh, research. Staffing machines. <clears throat> HVA operation failed. It seems like our mission failed in, a, in its objective. But it was due to a lack of technological advancements or an undeveloped budget or an understaffed an untrained agency. The HVA has lost some of its pride as an effective intelligence agency. The president is displeased to hear this news. Though it does not expect guaranteed success on every operation, the HVA will recover. It can only hope that it will succeed next time. Ordnungspolizei? Where are you? They are not in opposition, huh? Ordnungspolizei. Well, right, let's get some more power. Because even though it hurts itself, there you go. It doesn't really matter too much. And over here, I keep forgetting to do this. More conservative loyalty. We'll get conservative, conservative. We're going to max all, all the conservative stuff. It shouldn't take too long. So, press controls are the price of control. In the latest of a series of economic reforms introduced by the Fuhrer, aimed at curbing the power of the mega corporations that dominate the German landscape, has been announced, including much crumbling among the executives. In order to bear the bo better bind the notoriously independent minded firms as well, Fuhrer Bormans declared the introduction of a set of price controls and asserted it wh that whilst raw materials may be extracted by private firms, this material is property of the Reich and must be purchased at prices set by the economic ministry. Similarly, all sales of the government will be made at predetermined prices. While this would otherwise cause a colossal shortfall in revenue for these titans of industry, the price controls are accompanied by a generous plan of subsidies to make up the shortfall. Notable figures such as Hillman, Josef Abs, and Friedrich Flick are reported to have voiced their displeasure in private, though they have little recourse other than about their fears' wishes and continue business as usual, unless they want to find their friends dismantled, dismantled and businesses themselves, themselves behind bars. And the money will continue to flow, but every transaction now takes place one step closer to the government. Bound with paperwork, their leash has been shortened. They must learn that the Reich is a master. And... All these roads to Germania? Of course. The efforts to consolidate the GGR is almost successful. And thanks slowly to the under work undertaken by the Fuhrer Martin Bowman. Although the government hasn't fully completed our plan, we have already found it easier to dictate the dealings of the Reich's far-off factories. Thus, the government shall ensure that new factories are built around centralized regional transportation hubs in all Reich's commissariats, for Germany, Germania's control is rightful. Anything else? I would love to integrate the Netherlands 
and pull Antarctica satellites just because we can. Because we can. Anything done there? So good. Looking not too bad. Minus 11 billion. So good. Oh, look, 295. 249, I mean. 249. Nice. And we're building up our allies quite a much. Quite a much. Quite a bit. Quite a bit. Quite a bit, my friends. Followed up with the cog's turn. The Ent Scheidung's nest of effectiveness is unmatched. A well oiled machine, its calculations have re made redundant the proverbial chaff of the GGR's investment or harvest. For who, for decades, worked to undermine the Reich from with own government? As a computer does not require sleeper breaks, Fear of Bowman has successfully made redundant multiple eccentric fellows who have continuously taken up large quantities of her budget with personal pursuits that run counter to the government's desires. Oh, pretty good. Military expenditures is not super necessary right now. Ah, uh, ah, uh, two fifty eight. Oh my gosh, eight point one percent. This feels like it uh, might come all crashing down eventually, which would be quite bad for us. But you know, it is what it is. Uh, Jumani to Krakow. Absolutely, absolutely, positively, lutely. All right, so you guys got to become more conservative. There you go. Much better there. So much better. Can we dis dismantle the performists, maybe, eventually? That'd be kind of cool. Follow it up with a reformed Reich. Thank goodness. Oh, maybe not. We might not be able to do that one yet. The integration of Everex Commissariats. Ooh, thank God success is finally upon the GGR. Indeed, the infrastructure project begun by the fear of Bowman's government has enabled him to fulfill his pledge to finally cure the plague of unemployment. The once useless masters of the Reich can now reap the benefits of plentiful employment opportunities, and the unity pact is closer than ever before. Moreover, the promising news surrounding the Entscheid Nung's netbacks increased efficiency proved that our economy has been truly reformed. Well, we can't do that one yet, but let's go ahead and do instead. Smile for the cameras. A bond forged in atomic fire. How about that one? It seemed impossible. In many ways, the countries were born of the same ash, rising as a phoenix from the dust left by the European powers of Britain, France, and Russia. Yet Germany, snuggled deep into Central Europe, struggled to repel the Japanese invasion in the Oceanic Theater of the First World War. Only three, day, three decades later, the former enemies would be fighting side by side in the war of revenge against the powers that wronged them. The, those brave enough to call the fear a fool for supporting Japan in the righteous struggle against American decadence were quickly silenced by the blast of the atomic bomb. When Japan needed her most, Germany had answered. Well, a Renungsspur. Phew, Martin Bormann sat down at his desk and stared at the map in front of him, a familiar sight given his status as a rightful ruler of the world. It was an old map before the Aryan race had asserted its global hegemony and supremacy. Pins and holes marked where the magnificent legions of the Axis had crushed their enemies so many times, and so many sites of triumph over the Bolsheviks and Jews. The gears in Bormann's heads turned, and an old map turned into old memories filling his mind. Beginning of their alliance to conquer the world, at the time of squalor and degeneracy then, yet at the time of promisers, it was the Italians who joined the Axis, then the Japanese, different races of course, but they had a common enemy of the Bolsheviks. At least they knew who the real threat was. While the Reich triumphed over its enemies, oh, how his heart filled with joy when he remembered the subjugation of Europe. The Japanese fought their own enemies, crushing the communists in China and asserting their own supremacy in the Asian continent. His eyes returned to the real world for a momentary painful second before finding a hole within the Pacific, on the small island of Iwo Jima. Even those Asians could have had their triumphs, he supposed. Reports spoke of how the sea filled with blood and iron, a graveyard spanning the waves, and the complete rout of the Americans. It was not long after that that the ultimate weapon of the Reich, the product of the world's greatest minds, was detonated in Pearl Harbor, and the war came to a close. When the, world, when the war ended, the world belonged to the Axis, there were no more Bolsheviks to conquer, and so in triumph it came ruined to the Axis. No more unifying enemy and no more reason to cooperate. The Axis lasted about as long as the war. And, but, <clears throat> the Reich endured longer, and it shall forever. Memory lane caught up to the modern day and Bormann was deposited into the real world where Japan was no longer an ally. The pain of friends turned enemies. Oh, sad, sad, sad. Broken in instant. Things have changed since then, though. We're no longer do the Japanese and German empires in hand their respective place in the sun. No, the Oriental understands one language. Treachery. It is ingrained in the mind of the Asian from birth till the time it arrives to teach the next generation the same. Most tragedies in history are hard to pinpoint the exact cause of. There's no nuance in the case of the attempt attempted assassination of Adolf Hitler. The fear was shot by the Japanese due to his strong genetics. The fear denied the death sentence the Japanese had made for him. The fact is plain for all to see and should not be sidestepped or hidden beyond or behind fancy politicking. Despite the insistence of the foreign minister, fear Bormann does not fear the rising sun. Uh, let's, we could probably go and do this as well. And we're actually importing more tungsten, huh? I didn't realize this. There we go. So good. Uh, broken in instant. Das Reichs im Indischen Ozean. Sure. 
Mopping up the empires of Britain and France was a task only Germany could undertake. Central and Southern Africa was a perfect German dominion, ready to enforce a hierarchy that the democracies of Belgium, France, and Britain were incapable of doing. The faults of the South African War revealed that the Reichskommissariats were not as ideal as once thought. The inability of Reichskommissars Hutig and Maurice to govern led the Reich's positions in the Indian Ocean to break away. It is a sacred duty of the Reich to retake the lands essential to a power projection. Statue statue for a thousand years. It was a fine sunny day in the capital of the world. Birds were flying high and the roads bustling with citizens around the freshly coronated Hitlerplatz. Near the center by the central statue uh, currently covered by a canvas was a Fuhrer standing proudly, a hidden smile forming on his face beneath the this curtain, he said. His smile stealthily disappeared. It is a portrayal of the greatest man that world has ever known, a hero of the Aryan race and the slayer of the Judeo-Bolshevik menace that had once ruled this world now under the German heel. He waited for the crowd's applause. A man whose legacy will last a thousand, no two thousand years, three, an eternal glory and legacy for an immortal man, a legacy that sadly had to outlive him. This man, he purposely had a break in his voice, was taken from us, taken from us that a from by that Asiatic menace, those Japanese hordes that lie across the ocean. The sly assassin, the monster of the Kenpai Tai, his bullets unfortunately struck with this magnificent man and sent him into a downward spiral of health. We know now that we would still have the savior of the Aryan race were it not for the betrayal of the Nipp Nipponese. Rest assured, German folks, justice shall be done one day, our soldiers shall one day enact justice, and Japan one will pay one day. For now, let the Emperor and those islands see this monument of gold and weep. Borman reached over and tried to yank out the canvas. Tried. His arm failed him. A photogenic jolt of pain and no strength to rip off the curtain. A nearby bodyguard noticed and quickly helped to rip off the canvas. Nobody would notice, for the statue truly was magnificent. Standing between the height of two men, a pure solid gold, Adolf Hitler is holding a great sword. An immortal man indeed. And as you can see on map, we'd gotten no event from this, but the Netherlands has been fully integrated in our nation. Truly glorious, I know. Stupendous, glorious, all the good, nice little buzzwords that the media likes to use. Well, depends which media, I suppose. Uh, let's see, subs. Oh, guys, come on over here and have a good time and do do a good job. A little bit of lag, and that's okay. Followed with Das Reich im Indischen Ozean, our place in the sun. Why not? Uh, actually, we need to own Reunion and Mar Maritus. How oh, about Eastern Savages? Oh, that one. The Aryan has tri risen triumphant. As was clear from the establishment of civilization, no people can even begin to rival what the Aryan people have accomplished. The flourishing cr culture and unbreakable will of the Aryan people should have been enough to sweep over Europe. But what is an Aryan? The question is easier asked than answered. During the war, the Fury recognized many ethnic groups as Ar 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 Aryans. Turks, Magyars, Finns should be treated as such as equals to the born, those born in... Uh, Munich or Dresden. The group with the most impact of them all was the Japanese, recognized as honorary Aryans for the unbreakable resolve and commitment to the nation ideals that the previous Fuhrer had held above all else. How far the Japanese have fallen. Germany fell victim to manipulation to treachery entrenched, entrenched in a false reality, one where the Japanese and Germans are not to be treated as equal, when they so obviously are not. Ah, oh, Sefa machines are done as well, so good. Alright, anything else here? No. So yes, as you see now, even this map has seen that we are, well, fully integrated as well. Down here, more recruitments? Yes, please. Sonderbell Funkdienst. So good. Arm from the rebel forces? Yes. Funds the Cabal? Yes, sir. Everything we can do, because even though it's still 0%, which kind of sucks. Uh, anything else we could do? Hide. Oh, infrastructure modernization? Yes, please. Expand extraction operations? I think we've pretty much almost done everything here that we can. For the most part, yes. And cut that down. Minus 13 billion. 7.7%. So good. And something they can never understand. The Japanese need to carve out their empire by mastering the art of speech or pragmatism. There were no Bismarck of the East, no great leader who could guide the nation to glory. While Germans overpowered the Anglo-French diplomats in Munich over the issue of the Czechs, the Japanese began to indiscriminately blunder the earth, devoid of honor or understanding the rules of war. Military powers burned bright but briefly. The Reich will last a thousand years by the simple virtue of the unmatched German understanding of diplomacy. The Fuhrer's closest advisors have prepared options for handling the Eastern savages. It is now a matter of the carrot or stick. The choice is the Fuhrer's in the hands alone. In his hands alone, I should really say. Good, good, good. Advanced artillery is looking mighty nice. It's almost 1969. So, Happy New Year. Death and Dishonor. Bowman stood at the podium. It was a smaller square than what he would usually make such an important announcement at. But it would be terrible optics to announce the reversal of the Hitler policy in a square named after him, and well, 
All the big squares were named after Hitler. He leaned into the microphone and began the redef redefinition of the racial hierarchy of all humanity. German Volks, he began, I have grave news. Far from the fatherland, across the Mongols and the Russian wastes, lie the Empire of Japan. Those people were once, I am ashamed to say, friends of the German nation indeed. We stood side by side, destroyed the Bolsheviks, the Jews in America, and all else who stood in their way. The world was divided between our two great empires indeed. Such was their friendship that we even allowed them the status of honorary Aryan ship to be allowed to stand with the Ger us in the German nation. <clears throat> Bowman's voice took a darker turn at this moment, releasing it with the anger of him of Germany. But they betrayed us. They broke our alliance, proving that they were puppets of the Judeo-Bolsheviks like the rest of them. Indeed, the status of the race was built on a lie, that they were allies to the Aryan race. Such treachery should have be, should have severe repercussions. As of this day, the honorary Aryan ship of the Japanese race has been retroactively revoked. It has been entirely built on a lie and was a mistake. The Japanese are as low as any Slav, no any Jew. There are any, they are an enemy of the Aryan race and an opponent... Uh, of humanity's purity. It is responsible of the German Volk to fight against this menace for the sake of our children. Our race alone. Water's duck, water off a duck's back. Advance anti tank equipment. Very good. Alright. Awesome. Anything else here? Not really. Not too much. No. We can invest more, but I want to make sure we get, we get rid of our debt first. So that's really my goal here. Get rid of debt and we'll be good. Nothing really down there. Nothing over here. Oh. Nope. Very, very good. Oh, there's some of this too. Awesome. Well, the art of diplomacy. We have chosen a policy of detente with the Japan sphere. Can we do this yet? No. Well, skilled workforce factors. Going, it's going to take some time to do so. Against the Shadow State, the Italian debacle. I kind of want to do that, but our place in the sun... Smile for the cameras. The American media is not kind to our fear. After all, if they were to know a show a truthful portrayal of the great German Reich, the dull American citizenry would be clamoring to emigrate to it. As such, the Americans portrayed Bormann as a monster and as they did Hitler before him. Before the Americans would accept any sort of deal with our nation, we need to show them that the fear is not as inhumane murder they have been brainwashed into believing he is. We've arranged an interview between our fear and the American journalists. We have, of course, set a few limits for what can and cannot be asked in this interview. This is not a means of deception, however, but as a means of making sure that the American people get a true and thorough view of the fear's character. So, Earlier in this episode, I did say that we should try to get as far as we possibly can in terms of trying to do the German Wunderwaffe and such. But obviously we can't do that yet because we have to wait for our the work, workforce, skilled workforce to increase drastically. So it's barely going up. And we're not getting there quite yet just because, well, it costs more money to do this. I suppose we can go up by slightly more, which would help maybe with our bonus here, but... How much is that going to hurt us? Oh, that's not bad. That is not bad. Oh. Oh. You know what? If that's... Maybe let a day go by first? No, that's not bad. 15.39%. Pure investment? Uh, point, plus point five percent Hmm. Is that still correct? I can't be correct, can it? And I'll read this soon enough, but... Okay then, so uh, we're going to max that out then, because our economy so far can handle it, and we better get it done before things really go poorly for us. Obviously, I have the game so positive. These guys are allied. Uh, actually, let's go over here. Conservative loyalty. Allied. Good. Uh, what's the next one that's close? Well, none of these are. And you're the, the banks have the most power out of all three, so there you go. Cool. Let's read this, and then we'll end the episode. The Yellow Race. Walter Hebel strode into the cabinet room with his usual polite smile. He sat down swiftly, shuffled his documents, and took a deep gulp from the ga glass of water awaiting him. Apologies for being so late, mine Fuhrer. Hebel thumbed through the documents and slid two sheets of paper towards the end of the table. Borman took a long drag of his cigarette as he plucked them up with his free hand. I have compiled a summary of our two most realistic courses of action regarding Japan. The safest option would be a mild detente, allowing us to ease tensions and open up diplomatic relations. Alternatively, we could take a more confrontational approach, treat them as a threat on the world stage, try to turn away uh, any potential allies away from them. It's about time we had a concrete plan to Japan, Borman responded. The various Rex ministers seated around the table nodded in agreement. The yellow race is cunning but ultimately cowardly. Roaches tend to scurry when you turn your gaze towards them. The cabinet roared with laughter. Opening relations with Japan will benefit the Reich, Baldur von Schirach interjected pompously. We mustn't rattle our sabers at a nuclear superpower. My ministry has spent countless hours formulating a confrontational approach, Havel snapped. He had grown weary of the aristocratic's, aristocratic's pretension. It's called tough diplomacy. 
Maul do have fallen Shirok, the just his immaculate uniform with an annoyed face. Volman scrunched up his face in deep thought, a smoking cigarette on the verge of slipping from his fingers. A support a date on Taylor Japan, or a confrontation would approach would protect the Reich. Now, I'll let you guys decide, should we do support a detente with Japan? So, which goes to Art of Diplomacy, which does plant the seeds, we will come bearing gifts, uh, and underhanded deals. So, let me know, should we do that, or a confrontational approach would protect the Reich with the glory of battle? Um, Aryans of the East, Guten Tag Tehran, the Niedermaya Hunting Expedition Resurgent, as well as International Forum on the Stability of Asia. Let me know which one we should do. Okay, the glory of battle or the art of diplomacy, I'll let you guys decide. But regardless, if you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe. If you are new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow when you show my choice and continue expanding the economy of Germany, getting rid of our slave force, and, well, integrating all of Ghost Germany under one leadership. From Germania, thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.